people who praise him don't die. For only the living can praise him. When you commit yourself to praising him, you are prolonging your days. Praise him. Those who murmur don't live long. Because they that murmur expose themselves to danger. Celebrate him, magnify him. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have given thanks. Yeah. The man Ezekiah, he said, I said in the cutting of my days, Isaiah 38 and verse 10, I shall go down to the gates of the grave. I'm deprived of the residue of my years. It got a sense of the number of years ordained for him to live. Say with me, knowledge. Because you won't know the balance if you don't know the whole. He knew the whole. And so he was demanding, but why are you cutting me off from the balance of my days? He said, for the grave cannot praise thee in case you don't take that. For you know I praise you all the time. The grace cannot praise thee. Death cannot celebrate thee. They that go down to the pit cannot hope for, the, for thy truth. The living, the living, he shall praise thee as I do this day. So who will praise you if I die? It's okay, I have to. 15 more years to your life. So you can engage a lifestyle of praise to prolong your days. It's as I do this day in the midst of this sickness. Can't you see me praising you? If I die, who will be doing that? It's okay, I add to your days. God is adding to the days of many people here today. Okay, I add to your days. The death cannot praise thee. They that go down to the grave cannot celebrate you. <laughs> Only the living can praise you as I do this day. And praise is comely unto God. Praise is tasty to God. Not just clapping when you are in church. But celebrating God even when you are in trouble. Can I hear your amen? <laughs> Everyone under the sound of my voice today. The sorrow of death is passed over your life. The sorrow of death is passed over your life. In the name of Jesus. Father, speak your word to everyone that is in here today. Let your light shine forth. And let that light shine shatter every shackle of death. Lord, pay everyone today a sudden visitation. Let your visitation mark the end of every devastation in everyone's family. So shall it be. In Jesus' precious name. Again, for the explosive addition that we have been experiencing since the year began as a church. Lift up your two hands one more time. It's never too much. And give God thanks. Thank you for rescuing souls from perdition. Thank you for rescuing souls from destruction. Thank you for adding to your church daily such as should be saved. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Father God. Jesus' precious name we are praying. 
Have you experienced any answers to your prayers this year? Lift up those two hands and give God thanks for answered prayers that you have experienced this year as an individual, as a family. Give God thanks. Give God thanks. And give God thanks. Hallelujah. Thank you. You are truly a prayer answering God and it shows in my life. I thank you again and again. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Lord, speak your word to everyone today. And let no one return without something to show. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name. Give Jesus a big, big hand. And please, you may be seated. I'm sure by now everyone has got in his or her hand a copy of Season of Southern Visitation, the prophetic focus for the month of August. And all that believe it will enjoy the blessedness of divine visitation this time. One genuine visitation can terminate all your frustrations forever and it is such encounters you will have this month for all our first timers and all the new converts please understand that coming to Jesus is not enough staying with Jesus is what makes your coming fruitful stay those that be planted not those that are visiting the house of God, they shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall flourish in the courts of our God. I gave my life to Jesus some 43 years now, or whatever, 44. And I know a number of people that perhaps were saved at the same time, but they were visitors to God. They were visitors, so they keep struggling all through life. He got me planted, and I stay planted. And I'm sure flourishing. And it shows. Those that be planted in the house of God, they shall flourish. Not go come, go come, go come. If you plant a seed in the ground and you are constantly removing to check, is it growing, is it not growing, you kill it. You are a seed. You better get planted if you will be, ever be turned into fruit. You must be planted and remain planted. And that's what makes all the difference. That's what makes all the difference. Psalm 92 and verse 12 and 13. And as you are planted, it's even, even up to old age, it will still be showing that you are planted. It will still be showing that you are planted. It will still be showing that you are planted. I'm, I'm as excited as I was the day I got saved. As excited as I was. And when I consciously got planted, I mean, from that date of September 12, 1976, I'm just flourishing like a palm tree. No dry season. Well, an end has come to dry seasons in your life. An end has come to every form of dry seasons in your life. And only those who are planted can be free from dry seasons. Only those who are planted can be free from dry seasons. Only those who are planted can be free from dry seasons. The palm trees have its leaves evergreen, whether in rainy season or out of rainy season, it's ever fresh. <laughs> and when you are planted, you begin to flourish like a palm tree. You don't know a dry season. Please hear me today. Staying planted is what makes your redemption colorful, fruitful, and struggle-free. Can I hear your amen? amen? Get planted. That's the word. Get planted. That's the word. Truth is timeless. And he said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. There is no Old Testament truth. Truth is truth. Truth is ageless. Truth is constant. Truth cannot be modernized. Truth cannot be civilized. Truth cannot grow. 
we can only grow in the knowledge of the truth. Truth cannot be developed. We can only develop our understanding of the truth. There is no new generation of truth. Truth is eternal. And sanctified by thy truth, thy word is truth. John 17, 17. And we can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. 2 Corinthians 13, 8. We can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. Truth is truth. Take it or leave it. Truth is truth. Take it or leave it. Truth is timeless. Truth is ageless. Truth is constant. Truth cannot be modernized. Truth cannot grow. We can only grow in our knowledge of the truth. Truth cannot be developed. We can only develop our understanding of the truth. There is no new generation truth. Truth is eternal. There is no old-fashioned truth. Truth is transgenerational. If therefore the word of God is truth, then the truth of scriptures must be timeless, ageless, and constant. Truth can never go out of fashion. Remember, I wrote this poem one early morning as the Holy Ghost visited me. Truth is constant. This church has been decorated by the operation of the truth. The life of many people in this church have been beautified by the operation of the truth. I have become a complex to the world by the operation of the truth. We don't even understand them. You can't understand a man walking the truth. He's walking outside his realm. Truth is heaven's wisdom in display. Glory to God. Understand this. It will really bless your life. There is no old-fashioned truth. Truth never gets out of fashion. Truth never gets outdated. Truth is truth any day, anywhere, anytime. Truth is truth. Take it or leave it. And I'm here, I'm glad you're here this morning to take it. To take the truth. Because my God will visit you and turn your struggles to miracles. a particular truth back in 1976 and it terminated every struggle and thought of struggles in my life. The greatest encounter of my Christian journey till tomorrow. The greatest discovery anybody can ever make on this earth. Upon that revelation, my life took a triumphant rest. I mean, triumphant rest. There are those who struggle to win. There are those who sweat to have victory. There are those who are living more than conquer. They are on the flight of truth. Our series this month is captioned Working in Financial Fortune. And a man sent from God with that unique message for this generation is communicating this to you by the grace of God. God said to me, Get back home and make my people rich. And I said, make people rich? With what? Who am I and what do I have? Back in 1987, I was in America at a chain of meetings already signed up for that I was supposed to be. I rushed back home like a madman. I broke all protocols. I never 
called the place I had meetings before I left, lest they prevail on me to stay. I arrived in Nigeria before I called them. Pam, pam, pam. Hello? Oh, when are you landing? Sorry, I'm in Nigeria. What? I'm in Nigeria. Why? I'm in Nigeria. That's to let, because when a word comes from the Lord, it's like fire shot up in your bones. God put in my car, in my hand, the key to financial fortune for his church. It was no tight play. I said, I, if you know the place I was to be, you'll be sorry for me. It was a disrespect to my person to have banged that kind of meeting. I was privileged to be brought in by a superior that I recognize as a father. Someone whose books I stood to publish in Nigeria because of the stuff inside it. And we are going to speak in that convention and you fled like a madman. I fled because of you. I knew I had a word from the Lord that will empower God's people for wealth. I knew that. And today, this ministry is a symbol of financial fortune. All the devils in here know it. It's only in this church to build a university without taking an offering. Full-fledged, multi-billion institution. And that's only one. Another one is on the way now. It's growing. There is nobody in this church worldwide that will claim to have been under any pressure in his life. That they are taking an offering. Okay, all the men, bring 5,000 now. Start running. All the women, bring 500 naira. It is that kind of restful fortune you are entering into this month. I never knew the time they pay children's school fees. I never knew. I, it was not a part of a family discussion. I'm talking of fortune. I'm not talking of supplies. I'm talking of swimming in fortune. Because the economy situation is not tough yet. It's just preparing for toughness. For darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness. We've never heard for long that European nations will be gasping. Conversing. Economic conversion. Old men are on the street protesting. Economic action. You better listen to a prophet said. So you don't struggle and die with sinners. Get back home and make my people rich. God saw you when he sent me. And today must mark the end of all your struggles. Yeah. There is no old-fashioned truth. Truth is truth. Take it or leave it. The God of sudden visitations is still alive today. And he has mapped you out as next in line for such sudden visitations. I 
I still consider the encounter of September 12, 1976 as the greatest of all my encounters with God in life. What is it? God just suddenly appeared to me from Matthew 6, 33. You know, when the Bible talks about visitation, it may not actually imply that something is flapping, you are hearing in the footsteps like Bishop Hart, you saw a vision that is so long. Many times he appears simply to his people by his word. First Samuel chapter 3, verse 21. The Lord appeared again unto Samuel at Shiloh. For the Lord appeared unto Samuel at Shiloh by the word of the Lord. By. So most often he appears to his people by his word. Many of you have seen that. I mean, <laughs> I was in Sheraton Hotel, it is 7 September 4, suddenly appeared from Hebrews chapter 7, verse 1 to 8. Suddenly, in such form. I was in a worship session, personal worship session, and suddenly he appeared. Isaiah 47, I mean 48, verse 8, 17. I am committed to leading you if you are committed to following me. Thank you. Suddenly he appeared. He said, I'm the Lord. I think no, he's still appearing to people by his word. May he appear to you today. God is still appearing to his people by his word. May this man be a month of divine appearances by the one in your life. This is so vital. And suddenly the Lord appeared to me. And if you look at it from verse 24, you cannot serve God and mammon. Many are struggling, serving money, doing everything to get it. But look at the lilies. Look at the sparrows. See how I decorate and feed them and you know beautify them. So why are you getting worried about what you are going to eat, what you're going to wear, where we're going to sleep? For after this thing do all the Gentiles seek after. But can I show you a secret? Seek you first, my kingdom. Subscribe to all of his demands and all these things that others are dying to get. And you all know, majority of humans are dying for resources. They are dying. Money, money, money. Our robbers are not just doing, they are not in the sports. It is money. Ritual killers are not looking for nothing but money. Kidnappers are looking for nothing but money. A lot of Nigerians are across the borders today. Personal and slavery. For money. Some with AD are washing dead bodies. They are not nurses. They are not carers. They are just dead body washers. What is it? Nothing has had humanity to ransom like the quest for money. The quest for money has had the whole of humanity to ransom. So, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all these things that others are dying to get shall be added to you. When God becomes any man's priority for living, and the expansion of his kingdom becomes the excitement of his life. Financial struggles amongst others will end permanently. I saw it. I saw it to a point that I subscribed to it by an oath. And I entered into a restful, triumphant realm of life. And I've been in it all this time. Some other fellows will come on board this uh, seemingly foolish flight. But with so much color and splendor. That's where you are going. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Serving God at 
and its interest is the gateway to a world of financial fortune. Serving God and his interest is the gateway to a world of financial fortune. Hmm. Then came March 22nd, 1982. Lord, show me the secret of financial prosperity. And I was out on a three-day adventure. And on the third day, the heavens came down. And God showed up from his word. Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse chapter 8 and verse 18. But thou shalt remember the Lord your God. For it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. That it may establish to you the covenant that is found to thy fathers as it is this day. That may establish to you his covenant. His covenant. He said, my son did. My prosperity plan is not a promise. So it has no respect for prayers. My prosperity plan is not a promise. It has no respect for fasting. My prosperity plan is a covenant. Until your part is played, I am not committed. Hello? So it's not a thing you pray for. It's not a thing you fast for. It's a thing you walk into. <laughs> it's not a game. It's a work. He said to Abraham, Walk with me and I'll take you into realms of fortune. Walk with me. It's not a game. It's not bring and I give you bring. It's a work. You must understand the terms. And I said, how reliable is this covenant? It's except my covenant be known with the day and with the night. If I have not appointed the of heaven, then may also my covenant with my servant David be broken. Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 20 to 25. What? What is this covenant? Why the earth remaineth? Seed time and harvest. Cold and heat. Summer and winter. Day and night shall not cease. Genesis 8 and verse 22. My eyes open wide like one who has been blind all his life. And I saw no one is entitled to a harvest time without a seed time. It is the seed, it is seed time that precedes harvest time. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, it is from that he will reap. It's so important to understand the covenant dimension of your access to the realms of financial fortune. You must understand the covenant dimension, the, the terms of the covenant. We must understand it. This is so vital. find a man or a woman working in financial fortune that has not embraced covenant practice as a lifestyle. Covenant practice as a lifestyle. Serving God and his interests as a way of life. Investing of your time, your energy, and resources to show that God is first in your considerations. A covenant, as it were, is a contractual agreement between two or more parties. In this case, agreement between God and man. God's integrity is committed to make good his promise when man's obedience is fully in place. For my covenant will I not break, 
nor alter the things that is gone forth out of my lips. Psalm 89 and verse 4. Verse 34, sorry. Psalm 89, verse 34. We can also define a covenant as a deal enacted by God based on well-defined terms and sealed with an oath. <laughs> it's based on well-defined terms and sealed with an oath. God is saying, I take my integrity to this. That if you do the followings, I am bound to respond as follows. <laughs> if you will do the following, I am bound to respond as follows. Do this, and you have committed me to do what I said. So I'm waiting on you. Anytime you are said, I'm ever said. When God made a promise to Abraham, he translated it to an oath, to a covenant, by an oath. By an oath. Chapter 6 of Hebrews, verse 13 to 18. By an oath. So the covenant, as it were, is God's wisdom for empowering the believers for supernatural prosperity. An understanding of the terms of this covenant will open anyone up to the fullness of God's prosperity plan. He said in Job 22 and verse 21 to 27, Acquaint now thyself with God, and then you'll be at peace. Thereby shall good come unto thee. Receive, I pray thee, the Lord from his mouth, and lay up his words in your heart. If you will return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up, and thou shalt put iniquity far from your tabernacle. Then shalt thou lay up gold as dust. Come and say fortune. Say with me financial fortune. You shall lay up gold as dust and the gold of offer as the stones of the brook. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense and thou shalt have what? Plenty of silver. Come and say financial fortune. When you receive the law that controls it and you operate it according to the principles that guide it, then you shall lay up gold as dust. That's where you are going. When men shall say there is a casting down, you will be singing there is a lifting up. So you must understand the law that puts you in command. And operating within the provisions, the principles of scriptures. Then you are supernaturally in command of wealth. And many commanders of wealth will be born this month on this platform. Somebody believe that. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. It was the love of God that made a financial wonder of Solomon. And Solomon loved the Lord. And the king went to Gibeon and sacrificed there. And a thousand burnt offerings he offered upon the altar. <laughs> and God came down. Thank God for sacrifice, but thank God for the platform. The love for God was the platform upon which that sacrifice was offered. Even though I offer my body to be born, if it is to get money, I'll get nothing. But if it is in demonstration of my love for God, 
I will get more than I bargain for. I will get more than I bargain for. So I'm just showing you one of the principles. I will get more than I bargain for. Solomon loved the Lord and the Lord motivated him to offer sacrifice in worship. And the Lord appeared to him, what are you here for? He said, how do I carry out this assignment? I need your wisdom to please you. He said, you have not asked for yourself riches. Okay, I've had you. I'll give you wisdom. But I will also add to you that which you have not asked. Both riches and honor. So that in all your days, so those who crave for money will remain frustrated. But when God becomes the crave of your life, everything will start working. For eyes have not seen, nor ears heard. It has not entered the heart of any man. The things that God has prepared for them that love him. Come on now. <laughs> First Corinthians 2 verse 9. Though I offer my body to be born, I power with all my goods to feed the poor, and I have no charity, it profits me nothing. 1 Corinthians 13, 3. And Solomon loved the Lord. 1 Kings 3, 3. And verse 13. That which you have not asked, I have also added unto you both riches and honor. And nobody in your day will compare with you. There are people like that here today that with the love of God burning hot in your life, you are on your way to your high places. So when they say, Bring seven souls. Move. And are you just wasting your time? Nothing moves until you are moved by what moves God. <laughs> Nothing moves until you are moved by what moves God. Nothing moves. God doesn't need our yeah yeah money. It is we who need his own. Amen. And do you really love me? He said, yeah. Go after my sheep. He said, your love is going to be theoretical. If you don't go after my lambs and go after my sheep, your love is fake. John 15. Chapter 21, verse 15 to 17. Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Oh, no, you know I love you. Who loves you more than me in this world? He said, hey, listen, go and prove it. How do I prove it? Go after my lamb. Go after my sheep. The only authentic proof of your love. Any other thing is singing love. <laughs> you find somebody is a musician, is singing love today and is divorced tomorrow. That's that what singing love is all about. <laughs> Don't you really, really love me? He said, Lord, you know that you know that you know. He said, okay, stop grammar. Go after my lamb. Go after my sheep. That is the only way to prove that you love me. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah. We are going to see wonders. Yeah. You have been giving money all your life. Now give your life. Give your what? The secret of my own personal financial fortune, which is known by all the devils in hell, is the giving of my life. The giving of what? Just last week, God blessed us, our family, with another grandchild. And that's why my wife is not here. She can explain the drama of September 12, 1976. I say, if I'm going for Jesus and they caught my hand, would you still like to be my wife? It was my life I gave. It was my life I gave. When I was coughing blood, January 1, 86, I won't fast for almost the whole year. And I felt like coughing and I went to the washroom. I said, open my mouth, pure blood. You don't need syringe to take the blood. It was direct. Direct. I said, you need to go home. I said, look, let this be the last, if it will be. I must finish this service. So, I went, Jesus, love you. <coughs> it wants to be saved. <coughs> I was doing my last to go to heaven. And it's not this kind of, yeah, yeah, you know, Jelenka Christianity we're talking about. We're talking about somebody whose life is sold out. I knew when I sold out to Jesus. And I knew when you are sold out 
you never lose value. I know. I have never asked any human being for help. In 32 years of this ministry, any, if anybody say I did, let him come up. Either for his church or for my small self. I connected to the main pipe of financial future. 1976. I'm a blessed man. If you think this is my height, you need eye treatment. Eye treatment. I want to connect it. You don't need any mortal support to impart on your generation when you have the backing of Jehovah. You have the backing of Jehovah Jireh. Everything will just be going groovy. Jesus turns me on. My life has no meaning to me except Him. <laughs> and so, what eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard, I'm privileged to see it happening through His grace for my life. Somebody else is boarding this flight today. That's what makes all the difference. Giving of your substance, great. Or giving of yourself, greatest. And I see the difference between Macedonian church and all the other churches that they first gave themselves unto God. <laughs> and then to us by the will of God. First, they first gave themselves unto God. Second Corinthians chapter 8. I do you to with the grace of God in my son joy. And the Bible said in verse 3, and this they did not as we hoped. But they first gave themselves unto God. That is the myth of financial fortune. Go through 3 to 5. That's the mystery of financial fortune. They first gave themselves unto God. And then to us by the will of God. So in their poverty, there was a strange display of liberality. <laughs> a strange display of liberality in their poverty. Strange display of liberality. Why? Because they got the mystery. If everybody takes this double portion, less levels, growth agenda, the way some people here in church took it and the way I have taken it. We will have flooded the whole of Canaan city and turned this place to an open air meeting. But some of you will remember. <laughs> oh God, just bless us. Bless us anyhow. We don't come here, we don't come here to be blessed. We just bless us. They have never spoken to one person since the year began. So how we go here? You? you are more important than his agenda, more important than his interest. So how will you become his interest? And when you put me your prayer card, it is only you. All the items there is about you. Oh God, my business. Oh God, my children. Oh God. If they check your prayer item, they may not find anyone you are praying for this year. One in your house. Once. You see, wherever a man's treasure is, there his heart is also. When your heart come 
comes into terms with God, you start making marks without sweat. If I were a carpenter, I would still be and still have global impact. If I were a carpenter, what I saw and what I entered into, if I were a barber, I'll be barbing every president in this on this earth. They'll be flying here to, to bab their head. He said, and whatsoever he doeth. Whatsoever. So my journey into financial fortune has nothing to do with ministry. Mm. I got on that journey 76. I was called to ministry 81. They have not, they are starting it. It has nothing to do with ministry. This man will have still been a prosperity wonder. Whether it's called to ministry or not, or not. I connected to the main pipe. 76. Please come and get connected to this main pipe. Now, a beggar is a beggar. Whether you are begging God or a begging man. A beggar is a beggar. It is not... Who you beg from that determines who a beggar is. It is the art of begging that makes a beggar. There are some who are begging God to help them. There are people that God is helping on his own agenda. He has organized their help. So he supplies them help without asking for it. I want to ask, before they call, I will answer. There is a company of people like that. And why they are here speaking? I want more. Friend, I never pray. Ask God. I never pray. Oh God, send money for this thing. I never, never. I never pray. Sir, I never pray for money for aircraft. I never. Ask God. You see, people are struggling because they are not connected to the main pipe. They are not connected. Friends, I'm blessed with houses. Now, that he built for me. Not that somebody said, give you a house. No. That Jesus built for me. I never prayed for one. One. That I said, God, give me a house. A beggar is a beggar. When you connect with God, he supplies same things to you. That's where you are going. Your businesses will open up without a human hand. Your career will be colorful without a human hand. Nineteen eighty six, I said to our church in Kaduna, stop giving. And you'll be surprised that nothing stops because God is not running his agenda on your resources. I'm not a pastor, I'm a prophet. I speak as God speaks to me. There is no VIP in this church. Everybody's a Jesus baby. If you are too big for them, go somewhere. So I'm not teaching you so you can drop your small, small covers. I'm teaching you so you can connect with his own eternal supplies. So you can become a wonder to your world. Are you not excited? Man, this ministry has no American dollar in it. And quote me anywhere. We've never written anybody across the nations of the earth for any supply. The fortune is visible even to the blind. That's where you are going. All this, my uncle has not helped me. My brother has not helped me. My, my stupid sister, my auntie, is crazy. <laughs> Glory to God. Because I connected to the main pipe, I told my late father, 1979. 19 what? I said, you see, when you die, whatever belongs to me, give it to the others because I will not need it. Ah. He said, they don't talk like that. Though. I said, <laughs> when you die, there are some ignorant babies. They are just calculating their father's wealth. <laughs> and 
And some are even praying that the fathers die. <laughs> I told my old man, 1979, only two of us were sitting down. I said, when you die, all that belongs to me, give it to the others. Because I will not need it. He said, no, once or a Amen. Man, I was fortune crazy. I was fortune intoxicated. <laughs> I've taken the wine of financial fortune. 1979. Before my father died, one of the houses they would have inherited. My wife and I pulled it down and rebuilt it. Gave it color. Gave him a large place on the ground floor with his cook and everything, with a car to match. Amen. You will build houses for your parents, the one they have never lived in. So instead of sitting and calculating what your parents have, I think he bought another land the other time. Bunny paper, what? <laughs> Amen. God is turning somebody here to a global breadwinner. You believe God in me and your Lord does. Amen. God is turning someone here to a global breadwinner. On this main pipe, the struggle cease. And that's all we are trying to do this morning to get you on that main pipe. Let me read a few scriptures to you before we quickly go to the longevity benefit of this covenant. Glory to God. Let's quickly move to Second Corinthians chapter eight. Moreover, brethren, verse 1, we do you to with the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. All the churches of winners this month will reflect a new order of grace. How that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abandoned unto the riches of their liberality. <laughs> For to their power I bear record, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves. Pray not with much entreaty that we should receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministry into the saints. This they did not as we hope, verse 5, but first gave their own selves to the Lord. When your life becomes a seed, your destiny blossoms supernaturally. When your life, I, I, I taught that in that teaching, the mystery of the greatest seed. Your life is the greatest seed that will take you to your highest place. When your life becomes a seed, your destiny blossoms supernaturally when your life your life becomes a seed Jesus came as the seed I said and except a seed falls to the ground and dies it abides no more when it dies it brings forth much fruit he said the time to glorify the son of man has come the time to glorify you has not come until your life becomes a seed John 12, 23 to 26. Until your life becomes a seed, the time to glorify you has not come. But when your life becomes a seed, you blossom sweatlessly, supernaturally. Sorrow freely, supernaturally. When your life becomes a genuine seed, this they did not as we hope. 
but first gave their own selves to the Lord as a seed and then to his cause who we are. <laughs> That's the grace you need. Everybody, now you know what I saw? We are just netting towards double portion and we are going next levels. So now, give me only 50,000 in this church that is committed to a soul per week to pray, to harvest, and to engage scriptural strategy to see established. Oh, go next levels. We've gone next levels. If it's not that people will be tearing me apart when they see me in town, I will be there every morning. That's what I'm doing. But I once went out one time and they just, they, they mobbed me. <laughs> Everybody, Muslims, unbelievers, Papa, Papa, Papa. That's why I have to bring people here to witness to them. I bring them here to preach to them because they won't let me go there. If I have the chance you have, if I have the privilege you have, how can a devil be driving you in your company and it's not saved? You. Do what? Every Muslim that came to covenant, properly saved, baptized, anointed, vision, can't come here and then go, go to where? Everybody have contact with you and cannot contact Jesus. What this is? How can you have a dry cleaner that's not saved? You have a cook in your house that is not saved. A gardener that is not saved. My parents got saved neatly, speaking in tongues friendly. Man, I'm a blessed man. And I'm saying it again. If you disregard this platform, your next, your double portion, next levels package is not sure. <laughs> it's not sure. Let me speak to you as a prophet, direct and raw. It's not sure. They first gave their own selves to the Lord, and then was by the will of God. And then things began to happen. Therefore, verse 7, as he abound in everything, I'm sure he's talking to our church, in faith and utterance, it is well, it is well, it is well. And knowledge, it is written, it is written. <laughs> and in all diligence, sanctuary keepers, you know, ushering, traffic control, see that to abound in this grace also, the grace of unequal liberality. What do I call it? That is anything goes to service his interests, whether in ministry to the poor, in giving to the cause of the gospel, anything goes without stress. Somebody is blessed. And that's where I believe God is talking to. But the very great interest here is this. That this covenant does not only connect you to material returns. The covenant of prosperity does not only connect us to financial returns. But carries along with it other returns that money can never buy. If you check Philippians 4. Oh, before we go in there, let's go in there to chapter 9 of this Second Corinthians, and then you see something here. But this I say, he that sweats sparingly, verse 6, shall also reap sparingly, and that sweat bountifully, shall also reap bountifully. Every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, nor of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. So we're talking about giving. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. So that ye always have an all sufficiency. 
in all things may abound to every good work. Verse 11. Being enriched in everything. In how many things? So it impacts on every area of our lives. Every area of our lives. Being enriched in everything unto all bountifulness. Everything. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 15 to 19. Ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, no church communicated with me concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For when I was in Thessalonica, you sent unto me once and again unto our necessity. He said, not because I desire a gift, but I desire a gift that may abound to your account. Therefore, but I have all and abound, I have received what you sent to me. Verse 19, he said, therefore my God shall supply. How many? How many? How many? Your hair needs, your protection needs, didn't you hear I said the Lord shall be thy defense against all the assets of the wicked one? So you take protection. Prove me now. I will rebuke the devourers, the witches, the wizards in your village for your sake. I will rebuke the altar witches for your sake. I will rebuke wicked forces for your sake. I see. So it goes beyond those material returns. Money cannot buy protection. There was a time the Prime Minister of Israel was shot down by a teenager. Money cannot buy protection. He said, The Lord shall be thy defense. Job 22, verse 25. So we connect with divine protection. Can I hear your amen? amen. It's also important for us to note that longevity is part of the fringe benefit of this covenant practice in Isaiah 65 and verse 20 to 24 there shall be no more days an impact of days nor an old man that has not fulfilled his days for the child shall die at a hundred years but the sinner been a hundred years shall be a cause. He will have struggles. And they shall build houses and what? And inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build another one inhabit. They shall not plant another one eat. For as the days of a tree, so are the days of my people and my elect shall long enjoy the works of their hands. Long. Long. That tells you the long life dimension of this covenant. For every planter, God has reserved a long term enjoyment of your fruits. Amen. That's why you will see your children's children to the fourth generation. Yeah. If you are confused as to what any truth means, then check the examples of those who operate that truth in scriptures and to be clear to you what it all means. All our covenant fathers enjoyed longevity. How many will say amen to that? Abraham, the father of this covenant of abundance, lived for 175 years. How many years? Genesis 15, 15. He lived for 175 years. It talks about you shall go to thy father's grave in a good old age. Every covenant practitioner is entitled to a good old age. Genesis 25 and verse 7 and 8. And all the days of Abraham was 175 years. And 103 score and 15 years. 103 score means 60. 15 means 60 plus 15. 175 years. According to scriptures, that is a good old age. Good old age. And Jesus died to connect us to the blessing of Abraham. 
so we are entitled to a good old age Genesis chapter 3 verse 13 and 14 I mean Galatians sorry Galatians chapter 13 I mean chapter 3 verses 13 and 14 the word says God has, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law be made the cause for what is written cause is every man that hanged upon the tree that the blessings of Abraham might come unto us who are Gentiles we might obtain the promise of the spirit through faith so every child of God is a seed of Abraham and is entitled to the blessings of Abraham among which is long life good old age receive that baptism now on your life Then we saw Isaac. Isaac lived for 180 years. Genesis 35 and verse 28 to 29. Isaac lived for 180 years. 180. And the days of Isaac were 104 score years. And the Bible says, We brethren as Isaac, we are children of promise. Galatians 4 28. We are the children of promise. So, we are entitled to a good old age after the order of Isaac. Then the third covenant father here is Jacob. Genesis 47 and verse 28. And Jacob lived for 147 years. 147 years. All our covenant fathers enjoyed a good old age therefore I release that virtue into your life today somebody believe that let me hear your loudest amen let me hear your loudest amen but all our covenant fathers are titans all our covenant fathers were titans. Abraham was a titan. By implication, because I know him who will command the children to walk in my ways, Genesis 18 19. By inference, Isaac must be a titan. Because he will command the children to walk in my ways. We understand from Sidney that Jacob was a titan. And of all that too, bless me with a tenth of it, I will give to you. Jacob was a titan. So every titan is entitled to long life. Can I hear your loudest? Amen. So you can give your way into longevity. There is a story told of John D. Rockefeller. He, was, he had a, a disease that was called terminal. It was cancer. He was going to die. He was not going to see his 51st or 52nd year. And he parted with 50% of his stakes. And God showed up and added over 40 years more to him. He gave his way into longevity. He gave, you see, people who don't give don't live long. You know the reason why? That rich fool who was only accumulating, he cut down his days. He called that. He said, those things should not be alive. Where well, you don't go to the toilet, you die. If you are not a giver, you are cutting short on your life. I've told you about this blessed man of God in our country. A picture of the faith. He's 113 this month. 113 years old this month. He's a dangerous giver. Dangerous dangerous giver maybe you don't know that ever since there is no shilo we are past that does not send cows as seed it has become part of his life forever one of the men of God was saying to me he said I don't know what to do with Baba because you bring something for him and what he put in your boot on your way going is more than what you brought so you are confused you are confused is one one three years now he's not a mechanical giver he's a spiritual seed sower my old man was younger than him when he died he still gave my mother
what I was younger than him when she died. He gives. How can you be giving me for what? It has become a lifestyle. You need to understand long life does not just occur. People work their way into it. You must become a delightsome giver to prolong your days. John D. Rockefeller added for God 40 years added to his days by giving away to help the people who are alive. Since they say I'm going to die. There is no way to leave this for my entire family. Let the world enjoy it. Get it, get it, get it. I don't want it wasted. Get it, let it keep the people who are going to be alive to be alive. And God said, hey, I'll keep you here. Because I know you'll be blessing mankind till I return. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. And he left at the age of 93. He was not going to see 42 before. I mean, 52 before. He left at 93. Don't kill yourself. If you eat and eat and you don't go to the toilet, you die. You die. Distribute. Be willing to communicate. Just have to live long. Somebody's blessed. Yeah. If you have struggle, give me your tithe. Where will you move to the realm of sacrifice? I may never need in my life again more than 5% of what I have. What will I do with it? I wear the same color. If I don't change, you won't know. There's nothing. <laughs> Glory to God. And it can't fade. If it fades, it will fade to white. And it's already white. So I don't have to. Glory to God. <laughs> now, look at this man. Oh. I'll be here alive and well at 100. I'll still be climbing up and down at 110. I will still be screaming on the devil and all his agents. And we are going to be there together. In the name of Jesus. So what we do right now is simply just as the oil comes on you to turn you to a seed and empower you to live the giver's life so you can enjoy longevity for free I say longevity for free so you can enjoy longevity for free so you can enjoy longevity for free and you shall enjoy longevity for free Somebody believe that? Give the Lord a big hand of praise, everybody. Come on, give him praise. Amen. Please understand that God's verdict for our life is 120. Genesis chapter 6 verse 3 After the flood God came down To enact a verdict Of our lives And the Lord said my spirit shall not always Strive with man For he is also flesh Yet his day shall be what An hundred and Twenty years That is God's verdict and every word from the Lord leaves you with a choice. David came and made a choice of 70. This call at 10 are the days of our years. And when he was 70 exactly, he left. Moses discovered, because God told him, the number of your days is 120. He was 120 when he left. Can I hear your amen? amen? So I knew before you life and death. Now, Abraham died at 175, he called it good old age. David died at, one, at 70, it was also called good old age. So the choice is yours. But the Bible 
road is clear. With long life will I satisfy you. That is, are you satisfied with what? Tell me what you are satisfied with and I'll give that to you. Where I grew up, when children eat, they ask them, are you satisfied? They always say, no. And then you give them more. And they eat and they become pregnant. <laughs> Glory to God. Psalm 91 verse 16. With long life will I satisfy you and I will show you my salvation. When I saw this man of God at 102, I said, that's what I've been preaching. I've seen it now. Yes. Glory to God. So I connected because it's a proof of the teaching I was teaching from 1982. Victory over death. This man is given that word from God. I never had it preached by a man in my life. And I'll read this testimony to you and then we close. Just to validate that when God sends a man on, uh, on an errand, he backs him up to perform it. Somebody is changing level. Yeah. The harassment of death against your family is over forever. Yeah. Dead but now alive. I was born into an Orthodox church background. But sometime in June 99, my wife convinced me that we should become members of the Winners Chapel. We joined the church and to God's glory, there have been a lot of victorious testimonies for us. The most striking one of them, of all this, was what happened to me in March. I had to travel to Abuja on March 2nd. And, but before I left home, I prayed with my family. While traveling on, on getting to somewhere between Lokoja and Okene, I ran out of fuel. I then decided to park at a filling station in Lokoja, passing the night there. And then to look for fuel the following day. During the night, a trailer carrying a container drove towards where I parked at the filling station and the container fell off the trailer and crushed my car, trapping me in it. It smashed it so that I could not be removed. I was trapped in the car between 3, 3 a.m. and 9 a.m. in the morning. When the rescue team came, I was certified dead at the accident scene. The container did not only smash my car, but also hit another stationary vehicle that was carrying 18 passengers and the driver. Everyone in the bus was killed. We were all taken to the local general hospital on my top. I was asleep in the vehicle when the accident happened. I had attended February Breakthrough Summit with the team commanding supernatural victory. I bought the audio tapes of the summit and was listening to one of them before I fell asleep in the vehicle. I remember hearing the bishop say, there is no champion without stories of challenges to tell. So wake up. There is no champion without stories of challenges to tell. So wake up. I didn't know what happened after this, but I remember that I was in a kind of a dream and kept saying the bishop, repeating this statement, to me over and over again. A pastor from Kaduna was driving past and saw my crushed vehicle bearing the winner sticker. He came to the hospital and asked the hospital management to allow him to see the accident victims. Come and say winners. Yeah. You better go and get a sticker and put on your car. Or they won't know where you belong. He went to the mortuary and said, show me the man. And they brought him out of the mortuary. And on bringing me out, they observed that I was alive. As though that was not enough, I found the breakthrough summit tape wrapped around my arm like a bandage. That was the only part of my body that was not that I had no scar from the accident. A doctor said I was to remain in the hospital for three months, but after regaining consciousness, I prayed to God, saying, If truly I'm serving you, I want to leave Abuja today. I returned to Lagos. I didn't know where the strength came from, but I found that I was hale and hearty to leave Abuja for Lagos. 
and give the testimony here. This is Obara M.O. We all heard this testimony in 2000. Still alive and well. He was hearing the message on the other side. He said the time cometh when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of Man and they that hear shall live. He was hearing the sound from the other side. Therefore, I speak to every arrow of death in your direction, return back to sender. Everyone appointed to death is now set free. You shall not die but live. And declare the works of God. In the name of Jesus. If truly I am serving you, not if truly I am coming to church, if truly I am serving you, and then he bounced back. He stood on this altar to celebrate Jesus. Therefore, the sorrow of death is passed over your life. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Very quickly, please. Say with me, long life is my portion, and the covenant is my access. Long life is my portion, and covenant practice is my access. Just quickly before we shut down in this service, there are people here that are not born again yet. Every of God's plan is the exclusive preserve of His children, wherever you are. You don't have an inheritance in a family you don't belong to. It is Jesus that makes you become a member of God's family. So if you are here, you are not born again yet, please stand to your feet and let to pray with you. And you shall be saved. God bless you. Wherever you are, just stand. Stand quickly. We are out of time. Stand quickly. We want to pray with you. And lead you to him who alone can save you. Please stand. God bless you. Everyone that wants to give his life to Christ, please stand wherever you are. I pray for you right there. Please stand quickly. Stand quickly. There are also people here today that need to rededicate their lives to Christ. If you are one of them, please stand. You want to rededicate your life to Christ? If you are one saved or somehow, somehow, you know yourself that the things are not really the way they should be. You are not on key with the demands of redemption. Please stand. You are not reflecting the fruits of salvation. Please stand. And keep standing, please. I'd like to pray with you right now. Everyone that wants to be saved, everyone that wants to give his or her life to Christ, please stand to your feet. Everyone that wants to dedicate his or her life to Christ, please stand to your feet. This is your chance for a change, of, a change of story. Don't miss it for anything. Don't miss it for anything. Don't miss it for anything. All of us who are standing, please flow to the nearest eye to where you are standing right now and then you'll be prayed for. Glory to God. All of you have not been given copies of this uh, first-timers package. You cannot be given your copy. Very importantly, you find our new brochure of 260 locations where the Believer's Foundation class is held on Monday. That is essential and crucial for you. Don't miss it for anything. Please be there. You go for only two Mondays, 6 to 7.30, and that is it. And then uh, you'll be properly grounded on the basic principles of Christianity so you can enjoy your new fan faith. All of us who are standing right now, you need this. You need that information. You need to be empowered by the Holy Ghost so you can walk in the truth of God's word. Can I hear your amen? Amen. 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 Please fill out your cards very quickly. Um, thank God for where He's brought us to. But well, thank God for where He's taken us to. Thank God much more for where He's taken us to. We have seen the hand of God. Whatever has happened to date is purely the raw hand of God. But we are not there yet. He said, Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. God is not a joker. He means what he says. He says what he means. When God says double, it means double. Otherwise, salvation doesn't mean salvation. When God says double, it means what? Double. When he says next level, it means what? When he says next level, it means what? Good news from Goshen. Amen. I need to say so that you know that it's not just happening here. Between January and now, God has added over 15,000 to the Goshen Church.
in Jordan now, the cell system in Goshen has grown over 100%. From 9,000 plus to 19,000 plus in attendance. Can I hear your amen? Come on, give the Lord praise. Just believe Him and then He does it. Glory to God. South African church began with 5,000 plus in January, but it's now 13,000 plus. The Johannesburg John, I mean, is it, what is it? Joe Bond Church was between, for seven weeks increased by 5,700 people within seven weeks. When God speaks, He means what He says, and He says what He means. That's why. God's double portion and next level's agenda at Faith Tabernacle is as real as the day. And every partaker of it will also command real returns. And that's you. So, we boarded the flight in February and we transited July 28th and we have embarked again on the last leg. And the last leg was flagged up at the breakthrough, I mean at the Hosanna night, and we are now on board. Don't be weary, because it that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Your testimony is sure. I said your testimony is sure. Your testimony is sure. So, please take personal responsibility for your personal advancement. Show to God that you truly love Him. By going after the souls for the rescue of their lives from destruction. We are on a rescue mission, not just mere church growth mission, on a rescue mission to the dying humanity. Don't miss your part of it. And next Saturday again, we are out on our district outreach. Are you excited about it? Come on, give the Lord a big hand of praise. All of us who are standing by now, you are finished filling out your cards, now bow your heads for prayers. Lift up your right hand before the Most High God with your heads bowed. As I live in this prayer of faith, say with me, Lord Jesus, I proclaim you today as my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day, you rose again that I might be justified. Right now, I believe my sins are forgiven. I'm justified by the blood. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. I am free from the power of sin to serve the living God. Thank you, Jesus, for receiving me. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me. Thank you, Jesus, for accepting me. Amen. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. And I cover each of you today with the precious blood of Jesus. Remain covered the remaining days of your life. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Shall we all rise to our feet? Take up the bottles of your anointing oil. shall not touch your life again. As you are anointed today, it becomes a mark on your life that is the soil can no longer access. The angel of vengeance went forth and the word of the Lord said, and everyone upon whom there is no mark. But upon anyone with a mark on his head, he said, spear him. As this oil comes on your head, death angels must spear you. I decree 
that no one gathers in your home again for money. In the name of Jesus. And also by this oil, said to their power I bear record and beyond their power. <laughs> the Holy Ghost is that power beyond our power. When he comes on you, he empowers you to do what you naturally for any reason cannot do. Therefore, as this oil comes on you, receive the empowerment to walk in the covenant. From today, your tithe will be like breathing. Your giving to the cause of the gospel will be with utmost excitement. Your servicing the needs of the poor will be with delight. By this anointing, giving will become a way of life to you. By this anointing, I release you as a breadwinner to your generation. And as you begin to live the giver's life, I decree a baptism of longevity on your life. Everyone appointed to death by this anointing, you are liberated. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Please put a little of this oil on your forehead. And in the name of Jesus, begin to decree, I'm spared. I'm spared. I'm spared. I'm spared. The destroyer cannot come near me. I'm spared. Every deadly disease is terminated in my body. I'm spared. In the name of Jesus, I am spared. I'm spared from the avenger of the blood. I am spared from the destroyer. I am spared. I am spared. I am spared. The end has come to every sorrow, every morning in my family. I am spared. I am spared. In Jesus. Precious name we are praying. Now come and begin to say with me, I receive the giver's anointing. After the order of the Macedonian church. Unusual grace in my given life. By this anointing, the yoke of holding back is destroyed in my life. By this anointing, the love of God blossoms the more in my heart. By this anointing, I receive the mark of longevity on my life, on my family, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. It is done in the name of Jesus. Finally, you'll be taking a shot of this oil. Every poison of untimely death inside anyone will be neutralized now. Every poison of untimely death, every terminal disease except Jesus has not sent me. Even the dead was hearing his voice in the region of death. You are still alive and you are hearing it now. That impossible case that the doctor has written up is being restored now. All that believe in the healing virtue of the oil, all that believe in the social virtue of the oil, all that believe in the crushing and the consuming with fire of every chaff in your system, Take that shot and glorify God. Thank you, Father. Come on, wave your hands to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. In Jesus' precious name. Very simple. Please receive the grace upon His prophet in your life this hour. Flow in this grace in higher dimensions. May your passion for God and the interest of His kingdom remain undying for life. This week, somebody else must discover Christ through you. Come inside that somebody else is joining you in service. And as the Lord name it, you will have.
stop your sudden visitation this time. Somebody has been visited this morning, am I correct? Have you been visited this morning? How many are sure of God's longevity body delivered in their life? How many believe? Go for 120. Come on, how many believe Jesus for 120? How many believe Jesus for 120? How many believe Christ for 120? Receive it in the name of Jesus. At 120, you will stand here to testify. You will not be carried when you are 120. They will not pass for you when you are 100. You will not be a burden until you meet Christ. Lord, give it to become the Lord of your family. Jesus' name. Together, let's share the goodness of the Lord in fellowship. Amen. Let's go to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a minute. Today's edition of Sasa.